Two pathways are followed at the same time in the management of delirium, one to deal with the behavior problems and another to identify and treat the medical disorder that causes them. A key point to remember is that delirium symptoms can last for a long time, even after the causes and risk factors are resolved. Virtually any medical condition can precipitate delirium in a susceptible patient, and multiple underlying conditions are often found. Prospective studies on delirium frequently cite metabolic encephalopathy, drug toxicity, and withdrawal from alcohol and sedatives as common conditions associated with the disorder. Metabolic encephalopathy encompasses disturbances such as fluid and electrolyte imbalances, various infections, organ failure, and hypoglycemia. Drug toxicity is a significant factor, accounting for about 30% of delirium cases and can occur even with therapeutic drug levels, especially in vulnerable patients. Specific therapy is directed toward the medical condition, which may involve administering specific antidotes in cases of acute drug poisoning. Separately, the management of alcohol withdrawal requires its own set of treatments and strategies. When delirium is manifest by agitation, symptom control is sometimes necessary to prevent harm or to allow evaluation and treatment. While non-pharmacologic interventions should be the mainstay of treatment, a cautious trial of psychotropic medication may be warranted in these circumstances. The Mind USA trial, a randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled study, included 1,183 patients with acute respiratory failure or shock who were randomly assigned to receive placebo, holoperidol, or ziprasidone. Among the participants, 48% developed delirium during the trial, with 89% having hypoactive delirium and 11% having hyperactive delirium. The median number of days alive without delirium or coma did not significantly differ between the groups, 8.5 in placebo, 7.9 in holoperidol, and 8.7 in ziprasidone. There were no significant differences in secondary endpoints or the frequency of extrapyramidal symptoms. The trial concluded that antipsychotics were not effective in treating delirium. Two systematic reviews commissioned by the Agency for Healthcare Research and Quality in 2019 also concluded that antipsychotics did not demonstrate effectiveness in either treatment or prevention of delirium. The first systematic review assessed the use of antipsychotics for preventing delirium in adults, analyzing 14 studies, but finding no significant differences in delirium incidence, delirium duration, hospital stay length, or mortality when comparing holoperidol to placebo. The review did, however, indicate that second-generation antipsychotics might reduce delirium incidence in postoperative patients but noted insufficient evidence regarding their impact on cognitive function and delirium severity, highlighting the need for further research in this area. The second systematic review assessed the benefits and harms of using antipsychotics to treat delirium in adult inpatients and was published in 2019. The review included 16 randomized controlled trials and 10 observational studies. The findings indicate that there were no significant differences in sedation status, delirium duration, hospital length of stay, or mortality when comparing holoperidol or second-generation antipsychotics to placebo. Moreover, there were no notable differences in delirium severity and cognitive functioning between holoperidol and second-generation antipsychotics. Following the 2018 MindUSA trial, Critical care guidelines recommended against the widespread use of antipsychotics for the treatment or prevention of ICU delirium. However, it is worth emphasizing that around 90% of the MindUSA trial participants had hypoactive delirium without agitation. As a result, these guidelines unintentionally discouraged the use of antipsychotics in agitated patients with delirium, despite limited evidence to support this approach. The AID-ICU trial was conducted across 16 European critical care units with 1,000 patients with delirium 
and compared the administration of haloperidol in doses of 2.5 mg up to 20 mg per day with a placebo. 4-5% of patients had hyperactive delirium. The trial reported intriguing results regarding the use of haloperidol in ICU delirium. While there was no significant difference in the number of days alive and out of the hospital at 90 days between the haloperidol and placebo groups, a closer examination revealed a potential reduction in 90-day mortality of about 7% in the haloperidol group. However, mortality was not a primary outcome, and further investigation is needed. Current evidence does not support the routine use of antipsychotic medications for the treatment or prevention of delirium in critically ill patients. The findings from clinical trials highlight the importance of individualized patient management, focusing on non-pharmacological interventions and cautious use of antipsychotics when necessary. When indicated, antipsychotic agents are generally used to treat severe agitation in the patient with delirium because these symptoms are associated with self-harm and effective alternatives are not available. The newer atypical antipsychotic agents, quetiapine, risperdone, cipressidone, and olanzapine, have fewer side effects in other clinical settings, and in small studies, they appear to have similar efficacy to holoprotol. Thank you for watching. This conclude all presentations of the sedation, analgesia, and delirium parts of the PADI's guidelines.